Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Arcanum. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that I chose to join me today here with Eric Obsidian in the uh, Stonecutter clan, or Wheel clan, or it's a clan of dwarves. Uh, and uh, we need to talk to him, we don't actually, we'll see that in a little bit, but we need to talk to him because of Durin's stone. And I was a little bit confused last episode, and I think I know where to go. Uh, I've been trying to um, look at walkthroughs without walking, uh, without looking at walkthroughs, uh, if you know what I mean by that. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically we need to go back, I think, to the Temple of the Panari, uh, and I have a save right there. But first we're going to talk to him just to refresh our memory about Durin's stone, because, well, we found the path of iron so anyway do you need something he asks yes hello uh, hello eric have you a moment how can i help you uh so i'm still looking for the iron clan and the durin stone come back as soon as possible if you ever do i'd be very interested in hearing what you'd have to tell uh, I don't know why I'm making that accent, I'm sorry. What is the Durin Stone? The Durin Stone is an ancient artifact upon which is carved the shape and the stone. A form of dwarven philosophy according to the schematic I found. The Durin Stone lies in the place of iron, perhaps the burial ground for the Iron Clan. And, uh, what do you mean the shape and stone? You don't know being a dwarf? I am not the only. I am not the one to tell you such things. The shape and stone is life to a dwarf. Perhaps you might learn of them someday. And that's that. So he doesn't actually tell us anything else, and certainly not with uh, the information we have. So I made my way back here. I've done all the traveling. I killed a few. Uh, you could see, you could see the differences in experience. I've killed a few um, a few uh, venom hounds, and I think some lesser dwyver uh, dwyverns. Sure, that's what they are. Um, and we're in Rosenboro. It's not, we're not actually next to the, um, we're not actually next to the, uh, to the Panari Temple. But what I'm doing here is messing around with this. I have not, uh, I have not done, I have do not done the investigation that I was going to do regarding the, you know, directions and all that sort of stuff. Somebody did tell me, uh, that I should walk along the coast to the north, or to this side, I suppose. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do, and see if something shows up. That looks interesting. Why is that there? What is that? Is that a clue? Oh! Those are markers, aren't they? Oh! Maybe those are markers. Well, um... Well, I have I have the notes over here. Let me just get grab my notebook. Uh, okay, so oh, there it is. Broadguard, that's where we are. We have Southwest 30. Now, this is north. So the, the marker should be this way, right? Because that would be Southwest. Let's see if we can find a marker. Did we actually... Because I sort of just figured and, and tried to go with uh, action points. But if there is a marker somewhere, which there definitely doesn't seem to be, if that is how he phrased that. Ah. Uh, well, there you go. No marker there. And after that would be southeast, so it, it is, it does send us in a weird direction. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not just not sure how that's gonna turn out. Uh, but apparently if we follow the, 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 the we're gonna follow the, the coast a little bit to the northwest, or I guess to the north, because this is north up here. Uh, we're gonna see what that does. And uh, if it does anything, that's going to be good. If it doesn't, that's going to be good as well, because we're going down to the uh, Panari Temple. And I'm going to try and figure out exactly what I need to do, because I am at a loss. I am basically at a loss. Okay, let me put down my notebook. Unless we find another marker. There is another marker. You jerks. You jerks, why do you have markers? You jerks, stop with the markers! Look at all the markers. Is there another marker around here? I bet there is. I bet, um... Well... Can't find them. But those are things. I say markers, they might be like seals or wards or... Whatever. We're not really finding... Anything too extraordinary. Let's just keep going a little bit, and then I'll I'll go back. 
Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any markers. So we may have overshot that. Okay, let's go back. Uh, so... Well, probably the best way would be to reload the autosave. Because I'm pretty close. I'm much closer. And yeah, so I just don't understand. Southwest... Thir oh! It's the other way around, maybe. Maybe it's the other way around. Uh, so it, the last instruction would be southeast, which means this direction so it is also 50 let me okay I'll get the notebook again so if it is the other way around which sounds weird but if it is and it kind of fits with a marker that we had around here it doesn't no maybe maybe I'm mistaken maybe uh, maybe the game is mistaken cuz I'm mistaken so let's see if I can find a marker that's relatively close and uh, and try to follow them through there. So there's one over there and that, that does seem to be the closest one. I can't use the map for anything and they don't certainly do it don't do anything. So it kinda looks like southwest from here would be this way. I wonder hmm. Let's try and triangulate this one. If there's another marker, look at that. Look at the distance. Look at that. That's south. So the either... You see what I mean? You see what I mean? I think the game developers are confused, or were confused, that, um, you know, that this isn't, you know, northwest over there. That's north. That's the... Unless I'm just really, really drunk or something. Um, so in that case... This could be southeast. Let's look around a little bit this way. I'm trying to figure that out. Oh, look at that. Southwest. 30. Is that it? Hmm. Did I miss one of the wards? Because we're finding them, and hopefully they're not just random things. So southwest would be this way. And I can't see behind that tree. But I also don't see, you know, any markers or anything around here that would point to anything. So maybe it's southeast. Maybe it... No. Hmm. Well, let's try and use the, the strategy of the reverse one. So this would be the Southwest 30. This is Southwest 30. So from here would be Southeast 42, which would mean we need to go this way. And further... Yeah, it kind of fits. It kind of fits. Look at that. Okay. And then we have Northeast uh, 20, which would be that one. <gasps> it's all the wrong way around. And then southeast 15 would be that one. Oh, we found it. Okay, I'm saving. Uh, let's go with this. And then northeast 30 would be. And also the game, the, the, the game developers are drunk. No, I mean they they did get themselves into a bit of a spot with a thing. Uh, so this would be northeast 30, and then southeast 50. That's a long path this way. It's a long, long path. Oh, Long Jones and Grand Piano. Let's go over here. Uh, and that would be the Southeast 50. And then we have a Southeast fi uh, Southwest 15. That would be that one. A Northwest 20, which would be this one over here. A Northeast 40. That's interesting. You mean there's one this way? There is one this way. And then a Southeast 50. Oh, you jerks. Did I almost reach it? I almost reached it, didn't I? Or maybe I did reach it, or something. Crap. Why did I... Why am I so bad at this? This stone vault looks ancient. An inscription on its face reads, 
Ye must know the word that opens all doors. I don't know that. I don't think I know the, the the word that opens all doors. It seems you do not yet do not yet know the password. Well, but that was fun. Okay. Well, we're going back to Caledon because that's where the Pag uh, Pagani, Pal Panari, Panari uh, Temple is, uh, and we need to go there to do something. And I that I don't know any more than that. That's basically how that is. So, it's still, it's it's quite a ways. Uh, but following the coast would get us there easily enough. Uh, but at least I figured out the, the riddle. Sort of. Hi. Sort of figured out the riddle. I actually, I think I did. I think I can proud myself in that. Uh, even though it was all weird. Because it was the, sort of the way back. But also the wrong way up. Huh. I just don't know. I am confused. As, uh, as as some might might say. <sighs> okay, so, uh, Pagani Temple. Pagani? Panari, dang it. It is up there. That's where we need to go. We've done everything over here in Caladon. And uh, it is uh, always a good, a good time here in Caladon. Apart from the time where I have to kill a demon. Or, actually not kill a demon, but kill the person that is being possessed by the demon. Uh, and, uh, and yeah and miss a bunch, because daggering is uh, very hard. Okay, so, from here to here, no, not to here, dang it. I mean, there's the house where I got the book, I still have the book with me. No, nope, not that, just wanted to close the inventory screen. Why'd you force me to go into the main menu? Nobody wants the main menu! Should be forbidden to go into the main menu, by law. By the decree of the Council of, Tal of, of Caledon. No, wait a minute, that's not right. What do they have here? Is it like the same thing as Durant? I don't know. If it is the same thing as Durant, then I guess it would be the Durant thing. Uh, what? Oh, there it is. I'm, I'm just turned around. It's all good. I was going to the castle. Did we ever meet? Yeah, they didn't say anything, did they? They were like, oh, we're too rich for you. Go away. We smell too nice for the likes of you. Uh, and we got a sewer grate over here, but that's how we got into the Nazarudin Temple. And we should be over there. Then we have a thick tome over here that th says a lot of things. And we have read it. And uh, and now I need to talk to that guy. I don't think he's going to tell me anything. I think it's still locked. So that's the problem. Greetings in the name of Nazarudin. Welcome to the first Panari Temple here in Caledon. How may I be of service? Yeah, you see this? This is what I mean. Virgil, do you... What is it that you want of me? Um... What can I answer for you? What do you think we should do now? Well, since this Victor Misk fellow is meant to have a copy of Horror Among the Dark Elves, we need to find him. Sounds good to me. But he's dead, and I think that's a conf that's a confusion over the book that I have, because the book that I have is the book of Turin's truth. Victor Minsk is dead. Uh, do I need to dig him up? No. I did that already. Right? Yeah. I wonder if I can go back in there just to check. Yeah, it's a skull. I can, no problem. Nobody bothers me. Oh, we're back here. Oh, it was much easier to go in into the, uh, meh, well, it wasn't too much different. Into the temple. So it might be in there or something. I don't think so. Because I can't ask about anything here. Can I, can I have you over here? Look, look this way. Thank you. Okay. Stay over here. That's perfect. Nice. Now, I think I've been in there. Can open both doors for convenience. It could be there. Electric lamps don't do anything. This confuses me greatly. 
So whoever... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's think. Whoever killed Victor Mist must have the book. Right? Let's see. F teleported away. It seems that the curse of San Ang under the assumed name of Kentic Wales. Okay, so that's... Yeah. He also confirmed that he paid Wesley for the information concerning Victor. Now, who killed Wesley? That was something I wanted to figure out. Is he buried here? Maybe... Maybe that's how it is. Maybe I need to figure out who killed Wesley. But it doesn't seem to be any place over here for, for me to dig up. These things are, are not like that. So how do I figure who killed Wesley? Do I need to talk to the cops? That could be one way of doing it. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is. Because I went to his house and there was nothing there. Uh, although they did have... She did say... Miss Minsk did say... Or I guess Mrs. Um, that uh, he had been found with a dagger buried in his heart. So, Moloch in hand seems to be in, in the, it's just that they like their daggers. It's a shame, it's, it's, it's a surprise that he didn't have an amulet of them next to them, but... Let's go and talk to the police and see... Maybe there's an autopsy thing going on. Oh, okay, okay, that's interesting. And I really should learn, uh, should do a better job, no. Uh, to, to, should do a better job at, at knowing how to read walkthroughs without reading walkthroughs. Let's have a chat. Thanks again. Oh, come on. Well. Let's go to the king. Because at this point, my only clue is going back to... Uh, is going back to Jill Bates, or Jill, whatever his name is, uh, and I don't think that's gonna do anything. I say king, but I—I I mean the council, the chairman, or whatever these guys are. Can I can I talk to you? No. They don't like me one bit. None of them. They all hate me. They all hate my guts. And there's still this whole mess in here that I'm not really sure what's going on. Because I couldn't get in back there. Was that dwarves? I don't remember. Okay, so I don't know what to do. I have officially exhausted all of my things. All of my avenues of thought. Of not thought, but of thought as well, but of um, clues and all that sort of stuff. It seems that Mr. Burbottom wrote under the assumed name. He also confirmed that he paid Wesley for the information concerning Victor Misk. Yeah. So maybe I do need to go to his house. I don't know. I'm gonna look it in, look, look into it, and uh, I'll go first to his house. But I'll see you in four seconds, and I'll know more things. I have found the error of my ways. We're outside of town now, and I need to go to Rosenboro. Roseboro, whatever, this place over here. And we need to dig up Victor Misk's father's grave. Oh, not you again, you jerks. Shut up. Just die. Just die with fire and many fires. And please let me get some experience out of here. Why is he so tough? Stop that. I'm departing. I've been seriously hurt, sir. Please help me. What the hell went on there? The world is against me. Everything is against me. It's it's just to punish me for my shame. I don't know what that was. Oh, and we're outside of town. Oh, that sucks so much. <sighs> okay, so. Um, the loading is real. You can see on the top right corner of the screen. Anyway, uh, so basically what happens is... What happened is... I talked to Mrs. Visk. Visk? Mrs. Misk, uh, and uh, she told me, I remember she telling me about Miss, uh, his, you know, the, the laboratory in Rosenboro, Ro or Roseboro, whatever, 
And uh, yeah, so I went there and basically didn't do what I was supposed to do all along, which was dig up a grave and then everything else from there just got confused. I, I, uh, I just got confused after that. Uh, I really had to go in and, and look for for a um, for a walkthrough, otherwise uh, I, I wouldn't be able to figure it out. So we're we're gonna dig up uh, Victor Misk's father, um, and uh, hopefully that dangerous man is not gonna show up or blow everyone up because he killed everyone. He killed everyone. What the heaven hell was that? <sighs> oh, these are wolves. Uh, Timber wolf. Perfect. What is that? Howler. Go for it. Works for me. There we go. Good stuff. Moving on. Uh, so yeah, we need to dig up a, gra a grave over there. Hopefully I have a shovel. If not, well, just a... Well, I wouldn't be surprised if I didn't have a shovel. Because I didn't I, I didn't actually check. I didn't I didn't check. I can check. If anybody, if anybody is going to have it, it's Gar. And yes, besides, sir. Gar, I gave him a new armor. I gave him the mystic armor. He likes it. So that's great. Do I see a shovel? No. Magnus, do you have a shovel? No. Virgil? No. What am I doing with my life? I'm getting a shovel. That's what I'm doing with my life. I'm gonna dig up all the graves. I don't care. Freshly filled graves? No, that must not be it. I mean, maybe it is. That's all the graves I'm gonna dig them up. Hopefully. Well, we'll see. So we have a shovel over here, and I will dig that up. That's uh, money. This is gold ring. I'll thank you very much. Who, who, who's they? Owing more. Gone away, owing more than he could pay. Okay. That's uh, a funny thing. Uh, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. Well, it you, you, you may not today, apparently, because you eat and be drink and marry. Uh, I've got a pocket watch, probably don't need that. Mm, I don't know what that's supposed to be. To, it's like a joke. Time and, and no money, because there was only two, mo two monies. We found it. These guys are idiots. Why didn't they find that before? Well, now we're going to have all the terrible things around me. Okay, let's put that. All the terrible people that are going to explode and stuff. What is this? We have the book. Okay, let me just save. Because the, the world conspires against me. I dedicate this to my dearest Raven. To Raven? Dearest? Hmm. I would gladly face again these horrors and a thousand others for only another moment with you. Dearest reader. It is only with the dear, oh, with the greatest fear and trepidation that I share this harrowing tale with you today. Even here, safe within the confines of my own home, I am still overcome with dread at the thought of what I am to tell you, and what it might mean for me or those close to me. And yet I feel compelled to do so, and the great muse guides my pen to this paper, and the words flow forth from the darkest regions of my heart, and mind... And, and heart and mind, where they have stayed well hidden until this very evening. I beg you, give ear to my confession, and if you please, if it please you, take this tale from me and return only your belief and trust that what you are about to hear is only and nothing but the truth. My name is Renford Ater Williger. Yes, we know this. We have known this. Born of the outlying regions of Ashbury, not far from the lair of Belerogrim, Be Belerogrim, where they found the bones of the great dragon, my childhood was a bright one, full of happiness and light, and my parents gave me all that a child might need. I was schooled both practically and excellently, and when my 18th year came around, I uh, accepted, uh, was accepted into Tarant University, and ultimately found my way into the Tarantian Zoological Society. Archaeology was first love, my first love, I suppose, but my first assignment w with the society was with the Cultural Anthropology Department. It was somewhat of a farce, actually, but the society had been given an enormous grant by one of Tarant's leading philanthropists, but philanthropists for a very specific purpose. That purpose was to confirm the existence of the Dark Elves which apparently they didn't even know existed. That's interesting. Every man, woman, and child in Arcanum has been raised on ghost stories and bedtime tales of these strange people known only as the Dark Elves. The anthropologist, they, the, the, to the anthropologist, 
They are the proverbial oasis in the desert. Proof of their existence has always literally disappeared into the air. No man has ever set eyes upon them, and not one shred of physical evidence had ever been found to establish that they were real. Myths and legends were plentiful, but for the in itinerant scientist, these mean less than nothing. What was needed was undeniable evidence, and I set out on this adventure with determination and confidence in my ability to bring forth just that. Had I known what lay ahead, I would have forsworn both anthropology and philanthropy and returned to work as a day laborer in the Ashbury shipyards. Better, to, uh, better the back-breaking work than the nightmares I face every night. Before leaving Tarant, I employed the service of a certain Jaren Bernal, an elven tracker who was recommended to me by the noble Mr. Quentin Payne, famed explorer and gentleman in every sense of the word. Jaren Bernal had been born in the Glimmering Forest, and it was said there wasn't a more knowledgeable man about the deep elf... Uh, the knowledgeable men about the deep elven groves this side of the Stonewall Mountains. His fees were a little less than reasonable, but I had been given enormous liberty in spending the allotted funds, and it was my honest opinion that Mr. Bernal was crucial to the success of the mission. I couldn't have been more correct. Within weeks, we were well within the deepest and yet uncharted regions of the uh, Western Glimmering, and never once did the unflappable Mr. Bernal unflappable. Hmm. Uh, look to his compass or consult a map. Occasionally he would stand for a moment within a clearing or beneath a great tree, had cocked eyes closed, for aside from these infrequent moments of meditation, it was all we could do to keep up with him. Upon the 42nd day of our journey, we came to a great meadow, seemingly alive with a multitude of birds and butterflies that flew above it. Crossing this fragrant and lively field was the, the one of the most was one of the most vivid moments I'd experienced on the journey so far, and I was so enthralled by the scene around me that I almost missed the most spectacular vision given to the eyes of mortal man. Kintara, the great elven tree city, lay within the towering trees of the end of the uh, at the end of the clearing, hanging like a cut jewel in the crown of a king. The mother tree, almost 400 feet tall, housed the intricately carved Hall of Truth, which shone white and smooth in the sun in the noonday sun. Impossibly thin walkways wove in and out of the of the boughs of the great tree, not taking away from its natural beauty, but adding to it as if the city were merely a convenient and beautiful tangle of leaves and branches tattooed with the flowing runes and symbols in the ancient and elven tongue. And among these, the grateful and lithe forms of the elves singing their beautiful songs, they didn't sing to me, and looking down upon the ragtag group of men with curiosity and amusement. Of Kintara, I can only say this, the month I spent there was the best of my entire life. I learned much less about the Dark Elves than I would have liked, almost nothing at all really, but the moments I spent there were strange and wonderful and breathtaking, and I will not do them a disservice by attempting to put them into words. Suffice it to say that I learned there as a young man what of ten takes a... Oh, sorry what often takes others a lifetime, and to my teacher I give heartfelt thanks and the warmest greetings. There is not a day that goes by that I don't think of you. We left the trees of Kintaro with little more than faint whispers about the dark elves and where they might be found. The elves of Kintaro were very reluctant to speak of them, and they begged us to forget such foolishness and to go home to Tarant. I, of course, would hear no such talk, and we traveled on north this time, as Mr. Bernal believed he had uncovered a clue as to their whereabouts during his investigations while in Kintara. And he had discovered a name, Tsenang, the home of the Dark Elves. We traveled for 17 more days, exhausting our supplies and sending and sending most of the party back to Tarant. The forest had become thicker and more brambly, and it seemed that many of the trees were adorned with thorns, some more than a foot long. Another week, and it was only Mr. Bernal and myself, and we had agreed to return before the first of the month if we failed to find any further evidence, evidence of the Dark Elves' existence. They gave us six days to find Senang, and we pressed on despite our anxiety and fatigue. On the day before we had planned to return, the weather took a vicious turn. 
From out of the north came dark thunderheads and lightning flew down from the sky like barbed lances of white fire. It began to rain and we found an uneasy shelter beneath the massive roots of one of the great trees, which seemed poised over us like a giant and grotesquely gnarled hand. I was shivering and not altogether from the cold and pain. Weird shadows played against the trunks of the trees as the, sh as the storm strengthened and the lightning became more frequent. Thunder tore the sky above our heads. I looked at Mr. Bernal, and for the first time since we left Durant, I saw fear reflected in his eyes. I can't say when I first became aware of them, but one moment while looking out through the rain, I began to notice shadows that stayed even after the lightning had subsided. Those shadows became phantoms. The phantoms, something worse. They were stock steel, tall and wiry, ghostly faces, the color of ivory with eyes of blackest night. Their hair hung in limp strands against their foreheads and cheeks, and they stood unblinking, oblivious to the storm and its ragings. Banal screamed something to my right, and then was pulled bodily from the, our shelter to the roots above. He screamed once more, and then was silent. I never heard from nor saw him again. I ran headlong past the elves in front of me, swinging blindly to clear a path. I was mad with fear, and my feet carried me deeper into the forest. I thought I heard dark and twisted laughter above and behind me, and shadowy figures darted among the trees to my left and right. Thorns tore at my arms and legs, and I stumbled among stones and the un underbrush, screaming incoherently. More than once, great elven arrows sunk into the trees around me, grazing my skin as they flew by. They were playing with me, enjoying the hunt. Waiting for just the right moment, my head was light from exhaustion and blood loss, and I fell to my knees, gasping for air. When I looked up, I saw it. There, in the trees above me, was Tsenang, the home of the Dark Elves. Unlike in Tarot, Tsenang was an abomination, slouched in the branches like a great beast waiting for its prey. Well, that sounds like a pretty thing. There were sputtering fires all along its battlements, and great spikes protruding from every surface like dragon spines. And I saw robed figures, gaunt and terrible, lined along its walkways and looking down upon me, beckoning, it seemed, for me to join them. I screamed again, and the figures seemed to raise their voices in unison. A terrible call without sound or meaning, but I heard them nonetheless. They were cursing me. They were welcoming me. In moments, I was surrounded again by my pursuers. Through the downpour, I saw them unsheathed daggers, their ghostish f smiles floating towards me as the thunder roared above. I closed my eyes, praying to whatever god would hear me. There was nothing else I could do. And then from nowhere, arrows were flying from behind me and above me. In moments, I was encircled completely with the half-buried shafts of the thickest hunting arrows and the dark elves around me whirled the to and fro in confusion. One pulled his bow from his back and notched an arrow in one flowing moment or movement, but was shot through the heart before he'd raised it past his shoulder. He fell silently, unbelieving. The others looked at me for a moment, the purest hatred harbored in their eyes, and then disappeared into the night, hands conspicuously at their sides. Amazed and spent, I fainted. I awoke some days later, many miles from the northern reaches of the Glimmering. I was alone, but my wounds had been treated, and my supplies had been replenished. I was back in Tarant, not two weeks later. I was never met I never met my rescuers, but I can guess who they were and where they were from, and I thank them if they are reading this. Without their aid, I surely would have died there in the shadow of Tsen Ang. And so, dear friend, again I beg of you to believe these words and the man who was who has told them to you. I do so only share uh, I do so only to share this burden with others, to gain comfort among those of my kind. At the very least, let these words stand as a warning to you. Often, evil is, tangible, is a tangible thing, and sometimes it is a people and a place. And sometimes it's the jerk that goes into other people's per cities and then complains that he gets shot in the back. Uh, such, and he complains also that he doesn't like dragon spines or something. Oh, this, they were terrible. This looked like dragon spines. Also, there, there were lamps on that had the fires and stuff. I don't... I, like, I hate it. Such are the dark elves, and such is the hell that is called their home. I have never returned to the Glimmering Forest, and I pray that I never do. Some things are better left alone. It is interesting, though. It is really interesting how it is ambiguous. Uh, it is ambiguous how... Um, yes, sir. Uh, how basically... Is it really evil? And I I don't know if it is on purpose. I think it is. I think it is on purpose. Uh, but I guess we'll find out when we go to Tsenang. Next. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG. And this has been Arcanum. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. 
Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye. Oh, come back here. Bye.